and minimalists. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus, and together we are the Minimalists. Today, we're going to talk about sustainability. We're going to talk about overconsumption. We're going to talk about some environmental concerns. We're going to talk about health and beauty products, right? I want to know how you keep <laughs> what your health skin and beauty products looking I use? so amazing. Oh man, I'm so glad we have an expert here to help us talk about all these things. <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about shopping with intention and we're going to answer your questions with today's guest. Amy Ann Cadwell is here. She yeah. is Welcome. the co-founder. She's the CEO of, of thegoodtrade.com. Thank you for joining us today, Amy Ann. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, our first question today is from Erica in well, here, Los Angeles, California. I'm wondering if you have a thought about minimalist hygiene because I am just exhausted trying to keep up with everything you're supposed to do to be a woman, a modern woman with, um, you know, color and cuts and waxing and tweezing and shaving and showering and drying your hair. Um, you know, how can I be a minimalist without being gross? You know, just what, where, where is the line when it comes to hygiene? Ryan, can you explain to Erica how can she can live as a modern woman? <laughs> yes, <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> can you let mansplain? A oh bit? my god! Well, here's the thing. I'll tell you, waxing that makes me anxious. Just the thought of waxing <laughs> yes, anything on absolutely. my body. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> Um, so, so uh, I don't know. I get my unibrow wax sometimes. Do you? And it hurts really bad. Really? <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well, Amy, your your website, thegoodtrade.com, You you actually and other contributors write about a lot a lot of. I mean, there's a whole lot to unpack in Erica's question here. Yeah. She ha has this sort of shotgun of it was you know, healthcare or or beauty care or it was it went from waxing to all of a sudden showering and blow drying <laughs> hair and. I get it. It yeah. becomes anxiety producing. Can we talk a little bit about this? Yeah. Well, first of all, I relate a <laughs> lot. I think there's so many messages and so much pressure for women about everything we have to do to prove that we're taking care of ourselves. Mm. And I think so many times that comes with like, we need to buy more things. We need the we need the cleanser. Then we need the, the face wash to remove the cleanser. And then, you know, there's just like this this expectation that I think is really unfair to our actual well-being. Mm. Um, but I think there are a few ways to kind of think differently about it. Uh, one is to think about the products that are actually meaningful for you or the routines. Taking a shower makes the list for me, for <laughs> sure. Uh, me too. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there are those essentials that I think we all need to feel good about how we present ourselves. But then once you know those essentials, looking for products that have really minimal ingredients, mm -hmm. so looking for really clean, minimal ingredients helps you be safer in the products you're using, but then have a, a lower impact on the environment as well. I love it. You know, it's and, and then also figuring out I think the appropriate amount. Like I agree. I'm I'm in the shower camp with you. Like I, <laughs> right. I, I think it's important to take a shower. I don't think it's important to take a shower ten times a day. Yeah. Right? And, and so that what is the appropriate amount? And then I think obviously that's a, a that is a parodic exaggeration of, of of course I'm not gonna take ten ten showers a day, but then what what's the appropriate amount of products that are going to add value to your life? Because as you just said, we feel compelled to have not just the cleanser, but the scrub and, and everything else because we're marketed to in ways exactly. that say, you have mm -hmm. to have this. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so if I'm talking to someone like Erica, the, I guess the question I'm going to ultimately ask her is what's appropriate for your life? And then, and then what can you, what can you do without for a temporary period of time to see yeah. what is actually appropriate for you? Yeah, necessary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I think another question I'd have, ask her is maybe what are the things she uses that she could find like a silver bullet product that might have many multi-uses okay. so for me that might be coconut oil it's a great makeup remover it's a great um moisturizer body lotion it's great after sun care if you have a sunburn it's antibacterial i'm using it to treat oh, wow. my puppy's ear infection <laughs> that's great so okay. it's like you know finding those products that yeah. you can use across 
many different uses limits the number of products that you feel you have to buy and consume. Yeah. I, s- I started uh, washing my face with water recently. Nice. <laughs> How's mar- it going? It's what going great. Before, Listerine? No, man. I was using like this lab. <laughs> Actually, you were there when she sold it to me in Chicago, like w- like years and years ago when we were in the corporate world. We took a trip out to Chicago and we were at Bloomingdale's okay. and yes. like I f- like we were walking on you know the the miracle or Magic Mile, Miracle Mile, the mm-hmm. Shopping Mile, Miracle Mile, Miracle Mile, <laughs> 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 and like I felt. You know, uh, you know, I didn't see a single miracle that time. Not even, not even one. But like, we walk into Bloomingdale's, and I'm like, I'm in Chicago on the Miracle Mile, and I'm, you know, like I felt all hoity-toity. And I remember we walked into a polo store, and I saw this like fifteen thousand dollar blazer, and of course, like I would never. What? But remember that? And I looked, no. at, I looked at Josh, and I was like, Should I do it? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, it's it, it is uh, it is interesting, like how we sell ourselves, or I was sold on like this face wash. I was yeah. using it for years and years and years, and then. Uh, my skin was not doing well. And uh, my wife, Mariah, she was like, you know, I heard like washing your face with water is actually the best thing to Much wash. It. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing. It's been working out great. But I'll tell you, the one thing that stands out with uh, Erica's question with me is these things that she feels like she's supposed to do. Yeah. So whenever I get that feeling of I'm supposed to do something, mm-hmm. I've got to ask myself, uh, and as a minimalist, I, I would ask myself, who am I doing this for? Like, am I doing it for myself? Or am I, am I doing it for someone else? Like Mariah, I don't ever... Um, you know, suggest to her the the way that she needs to keep herself. I mean, she ultimately uh, does things for herself that makes her feel beautiful and that makes her, you know, feel like a you know a modern woman. Um, but man, it is like going on Instagram. It is like uh, I don't know, advertisement city with all yeah. the eyeliner you're supposed to have and the face <laughs> wash you're supposed to have. And thank God she doesn't get caught up in that. But Erica, ask yourself, who are you doing it for? Um, if you're doing it for someone else or if you're doing it because, you know, an advertisement told you you're supposed to do it, um, that is certainly, that's you're, that's going to be an endless an endless uh, pursuit. Right. You're right. Yeah. Well, you're going to have a bunch of people dragging you in different directions then, right? Like you, you this person say you're supposed to do this. The next person saying you're supposed to do this. And they're pulling you in a million different directions. And all of a sudden, you're, you're fulfilling everyone else's standard of what beauty is as yeah, opposed to figuring out what is appropriate for you. you. Yeah. yeah, and I think there's this really unfortunate trend where like wellness and self-care is being overlapped with the amount of products you're supposed to have to sustain that kind of lifestyle and unfortunately that's not the root of what will heal our traumas or or help our anxieties Mm. and in fact i think they make us more anxious when we try these products and they don't bring us Mm. the the value and the hope and the um maybe self-confidence that that we're looking for and so it's this very like negative self-defeating cycle and i think especially for women there are all these retrograde notions around beauty and what a woman's worth is is, is based on how much she's spending on these, you know, um, micro needling treatments mm-hmm. or, you know, and I don't have a problem against any of those things. Some of those things make me feel amazing, but it's exactly that question. What makes me feel good fits in my lifestyle um, and who is it for? Yeah, and, and I, th- I think that what we're trying to do here is often, I think all of us get caught up is we're trying to buy shortcuts, right? Yeah. It, it, and so if I just spend this $50, this $100 right. on this yeah. product or service, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm going to get some uh, a magic result. Remember back in like the the 80s and 90s, they had these infomercials where like, and they probably still do it somewhere now. There's the equivalent where you put these like electrodes on your abs, and all of a sudden it worked your abs <laughs> for you. For it, weight loss. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you were all of a sudden gonna six pack abs. You didn't have to do anything but sit on your couch, watch TV, and get ripped. Wouldn't that be nice? Right. It doesn't work. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. If I just spend you know the 39.99 on these electrodes, then all of a sudden my no, it doesn't work like that there's there's work required and then some of these things these products or services can augment that experience you'll never buy your way to well-being mm. but you but you can buy some tools that will help you in in that journey toward well-being podcast shine you got to tweet that you cannot buy your way to well-being that is really really good well the other thing too like for erica let's say she's i don't know if she's single or not but let's say she is single and she's doing all these things because she's trying to like a, a, attract a mate sure. like i would anyone out there doing that i would ask like are these sustainable habits because once you find the mate like are there certain things that oh now i have a mate i don't have to do this anymore like wouldn't it be much better to like just be yourself attract the type of person that's going to accept you for who you are and not this um you know 
fabricated version of oneself. Yeah. I think the last thing I'll, I'll say to Erica is you need to understand what your values are so you can understand your needs. Otherwise, everyone else's needs are, are going to become your needs, yeah. even though they are probably not even your wants, let alone your needs. So, uh, Erica, I'm going to send you a copy of our book, Minimalism. It uh, talks about the five foundational values that, that Ryan and I often talk about and how, how you can discover what is appropriate for you. And so if you like our podcast, you'll like the audiobook version of Minimalism, Live a Meaningful Life. Or if you want the book book or the ebook version, we'll be happy to send those to you as well. Ryan, what time is it? You know what time it is. It is time for our lightning round where we answer questions from social media. Indeed we do. So, so Amy, and this is how it works. We're at The Minimalists on all the social media networks. You're at The Good Trade on, on social media. Yep. Um, and so people tweet us questions, they Instagram us questions, they DM us questions, and we try to answer them with a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. Okay. Uh, we put the text to these minimal maxims in the show notes. We're also going to put links to all the articles that we talk about today with uh, The Good Trade as well. Uh, they're in the show notes, so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you like. And now you can find all of our pithy answers, all of our minimal maxims in one place. Uh, thanks to our good friend Jessica Lynn Williams, uh, minimalmaxims.com. Right. Here's what we actually do, though. We just ramble on a bit until we find something yeah. pithy. Again, like and, and Sean does the work. Too. Yes. Sean, the pithy. Sean I love that. makes a beautiful <laughs> post. Yeah, and then Jessica does a good job of sharing on social media. She's actually yeah. the, the awesome. person who exposed us to yeah, you. So thank great. you, Jessica, for... Uh, for exposing us to the good trade. What I love about Jess and Sean is like they'll fix my grammar when I totally you know screw up in a short pithy answer. <laughs> like sometimes I'll see something on Twitter where someone's quote me. I'm like, did I actually say that? Like that's good. Like, <laughs> it's all thanks to Sean and Jess. All right, our first question is from Olivia. What are some easy, non-overwhelming ways to introduce sustainability practices into a relationship without it coming across as judgmental? I would love if my fiance was just as jazzed about sustainability as I am, but I don't want to overstep with all my sustainable quirks. Well, so I have a pithy answer, and I'd love to hear what Amy Ann has to think about it. So, so the thing that stood out to me in Olivia's question here is, what are some easy, non-overwhelming ways? And that word easy, that's the shortcut thing we were just talking about, right? So my pithy answer is, important changes aren't easy, but they can be simple. And I think too often we conflate the two, right? Sure. We're, we're looking for the the path of least resistance, what is easy, but, but simple is the opposite. Simple is well curated, it's difficult work, but it is the most direct path toward whatever change we're, we're trying to make. Mm -hmm. So Olivia is asking, well, look, my husband, is just not jazzed about sustainability. <laughs> and and an uncharitable reading of this question would say, how do I force my husband to be more sustainable? <laughs> I'm sure you get questions like this all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think it starts with education and, and actually getting buy-in together. So um, start with documentaries, start with a couple of books. I can usually get my husband to sit down for a documentary with me on some topic, you know, if mm. I'm interested in it, um, he'll give an hour to, to watch something or an hour and a half. So podcasts, documentaries, I think are a great place to start to lay the foundation because it's very difficult to get a partner on board with behavior changes until they kind of adopt the same value. Mm -hmm. So there's that direction. And then I think the other is just live sustainably yourself, you know, yeah. implement things that, that are working for you. And I've learned so much from my husband who you know, in so many different ways. And he's learned from me in the years that we've been together um, in different passion areas, but they overlap and then come together. So educate yourselves together and then lead by example. I think totally the agree. beautiful part about leading by example is also showing your significant other the, the benefits through that, right? Because uh, when we talk about minimalism, people get overwhelmed when they think about like just cleaning out their closet or right. their junk drawers yeah. or, or just how am I going to declutter my entire house? That's so overwhelming. People are like, why, why would I even want to do that? But that's the important thing. Why would you want to do that? Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of living more sustainably? So Olivia, instead of just telling your, your husband, like, here's what I'm doing, you should do it too. Talk about why you're doing that and what benefits you're experiencing. And then also what are the benefits he's going to experience? Because they might even be different from the benefits you, that you experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my pithy answer is pretty simple. It's the only thing people dislike more than change is being changed. So Olivia, <laughs> you're not going to like force your husband into being more sustainable. I know with Mariah and I, like when we first got together, I thought I was pretty, uh, 
I don't know, conscious about the environment and like living with her over time. I have really realized like, oh, wow, there are things I haven't considered. Like something small as like if you get Q-tips, you know, don't get the plastic yeah. Q-tips. Like just something really small like that or Ziploc bags. I really, it's not like I went through a ton of them uh-huh. and because I didn't go through a ton of them, I never really thought about using yeah, Ziploc absolutely. bags. But like Mariah has shown me like, no, like not only uh, can you use few Ziploc bags, but you can use fewer by reusing them, washing them out, things yeah. like that. So the, I guess ultimately, you know, I want to have a good relationship. And part of having a good relationship is going out of your way to support each other. So with Mariah, she supports me with educating me on what's better for the environment. And uh, because I want to support her, I, and I want to, you know, be environmentally friendly, I will uh, go out of my way to kind of, I don't know, pick up on some of her habits, but that's exactly what it is. It's me picking up on her habits. Yeah. I think that the other thing we need to keep in mind is shame almost never works. It's, and it never works long term, right? For sure. You can you can shame someone into changing a behavior immediately. I think back to when Ryan and I were in the corporate world, we had a boss who was just a tyrant. He would mm. shame people for not working 80 hours a week mm. and uh, or taking your all your vacation days in in one year. Yeah, I remember like the weird <laughs> passive aggressiveness of like you, we took I'm going to take an extra vacation day this this uh, week. Oh, must be nice. And you're Aww. like, yeah. it, it's gross, right? It's not fun. It was a toxic environment. Yeah, he got fu- he got fired eventually anyway. <laughs> and, and, and so don't create that toxic environment uh, where you are. The, if you want someone to follow you, you don't drag them in your direction. Yeah. You, you you want to show them why they would follow you in that direction. As Mariah did with, with Ryan, yeah. you're much more likely to follow her towards sustainability because she's showing you the benefit. She's sh- showing you the good side of it as opposed to, can't believe you, Ryan. Yeah. What a piece of crap you are no, for yeah. using that Ziploc she's, bag. She's really gentle and she has definitely taught me a lot. All right, our next question is from Tabitha. What would you consider a good place to start for someone who is looking to live a more sustainable life? What do you think? Thegoodtrade.com. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Well, what's, so, so I think what's compelling about the site is um, you take an approach to products. Who, you know, Ryan and I are um, aggressively minimal with a lot of the stuff yeah. that, that we talk about. We rarely talk about products. Um, but you do so, you, you shed a light on various products, not in a way you're, say, you're saying you should consume this. This yeah. is going to make you better. But like, let's highlight uh, some things that some people get value from. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to start living more sustainably, as Tabitha is asking here, yeah, I think it's definitely a good place to start. But how? what's a good place in her life to start, maybe yeah, is a better question. That's a great question. Um, well, I think once you kind of have an inclination towards minimalism, you're already so far down the path in terms of thinking about the things that you bring into your home and into your life and making sure they're of value to you. Um, So that's a really natural place to start. But then thinking about just the different categories of your lifestyle. So your transportation, your food, um, food and clothing. uh, How are these things that you can make little changes in your life to be more environmentally conscious and sustainable? So is that um, public transportation like we were talking about earlier? Mm. Is that riding a bike? Is that um, for food? Eating locally is so, is such a benefit in terms of the environmental ecosystem. Mm. So um, there are really actually very easily implemented behavior changes in each different categories but i think it is helpful to have a book a website a resource a community that's kind of helping you um think about those different areas of your life and what makes sense for you yeah in in psychology the term is is chunking and i i I like this because um when we memorize a phone number, which we rarely do these days now, <laughs> but it's impossible, not impossible, obviously, to just take a 10-digit number. It's much more difficult to remember. And so instead we have this area code, 937. Like, okay, I know that's Dayton, Ohio, right? And and then we have the prefix. And like you're memorizing it in chunks, and it makes it more palatable. And I think the same thing is true when uh, we're looking at making a change in our life. Like where are the areas, the categories, as you say, that I want to change? And I I can start looking at one particular area. I can say, okay, maybe it's about fashion right now. I I, I want want to be more sustainably minded when uh when when i'm approaching fashion maybe it's it's food maybe it is uh man i'm i'm just driving way 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 too much and and we want to figure out how can i be more sustainable as opposed to trying to change everything at once look at one category and find that i have a pithy answer here for you ryan 
the direction is more important than the goal. Amen. And I, I think that yeah. too often we're like, uh, I want to live a zero waste lifestyle or whatever. That's and impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, and and so um, while there are. Uh, maybe the direction instead of living zero waste lifestyles, hey, I want to be more sustainable. Yeah. And yeah. you can eventually... I want to decrease the waste that I put out. Right. And, right. And, and you can start to quantify that in smaller leaps mm-hmm. as opposed to, well, I'm, I'm failing. If, yeah. I, if I produce any waste whatsoever, I'm failing. No, maybe you, you reframe that and I'm succeeding mm-hmm. if I reduce my footprint, however you want to measure exactly. that, by 10% yeah. this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to offend any of our zero we- zero waste listeners because like sometimes uh, we'll say something and like they they'll, they'll DM me or something they're all upset but I just you know to your point of uh, it's impossible when 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 I think of zero waste being impossible I think about like when I go get a cup of coffee like I could absolutely bring my own to go cup yeah. and go to the coffee store and get some coffee poured in there and screw on the lid, go about my day and drink it, go home and wash it. And I have not produced any waste that day. However, the, the, the waste that goes into making that cup of coffee, like, yeah, maybe it's not on me, but it's still on the coffee shop. Yeah. So that's, that's, is that kind of when you think it's impossible? Is that what you kind of think about? Exactly. I think that in order to exist in society, there is some level of waste generated by the way that we're interacting right. in our, in the world as it is today. And I think that's okay. I don't think that we should allow shame and guilt to take you know, to stop us from taking the next Mm. step from wherever we are. And that might be very incremental, but it's progress, it's movement. And I think that's the responsibility that each of us have. I totally agree. Uh, My pithy answer for you, Josh, is this small and consistent actions will add up to big changes. So when I was, uh, I was doing a little research on the environment, like what are the biggest things that uh, are hurting the environment yeah. right now, and by far, um, airplanes is if Air we could travel. yes, if we <laughs> could stop flying, thing. we would cut out exactly. so much CO two. Yeah. There's not a good substitute though exactly. for for airplane travel. So I guess like um, I, I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot sure. here with with the average you know uh, uh, first world citizen. Yeah. What is typically like the biggest waste factor in in a home? Do, do you have any idea what that would be? Well, certainly it's plane travel. I mean, you could eat, um, the next one would be red meat. Oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. So red meat, but then also your, your, this will change depending on the size of your home and, and Mm -hmm. what you're using, but energy consumption in the home is a huge, um, okay environmental impact as well so and there are ways to reduce all of these things something for me i do a lot of plane travel and so i have thought about how can i think about my diet differently because that's something that is a little bit easier yeah, for me to control and that. substitute <clears throat> exactly like i still travel home to see my family i travel home for or i travel for work frequently mm-hmm. and so um i think looking at the areas but in terms of big impact it's definitely transportation so mm-hmm. air travel and and cars um food and red meat is another big area Mm. and then household consumption of water electricity i love it so tabitha i mean you don't have to do all those things at once she doesn't have to like write this list and then tomorrow start making an impact with all those things but choose something whether it's eating a little bit less red meat or whether it is taking public transportation make these small little incremental changes and they they do add up to a lot if i were to just append that a little bit i would say also the small incremental inactions Mm. They they also lead to big changes yeah. in the negative direction, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think about the amount of plastic bottles I used to use. It's just one more bottle, right? Like, what's what's the big deal? But then all of a sudden, it's like, if I'm doing six plastic bottles a day, if I could just do the math on that really quick, that's a billion bottles a year, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> if you're rounding to the nearest I'm not billion. Sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, fact check us on that one podcast, Sean. Um, now, it looks like we have several more surprise questions uh, this week. Uh, let's see. What, what Was your minimalist journey inspired by environmental concerns? What are your recommendations regarding minimalist furniture? We've got an article to talk about here from uh, Amy Ann's website. Also, uh, what point? at what point do you consider an item no longer repairable and simply replace it? How do I become more intentional as a shopper? Also, the 10 best affordable brands for ethical fashion on a budget and nine apps to help you live more sustainably. And Ryan, I want to play another game of uh, overrated or underrated. I always lose that game. I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to talk about uh, coffee. We're going to talk about sandwiches, oh, avocados. Sandwiches underrated. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we, we will get into that. And if you want to hear all that, you can listen to this week's Maximal episode available exclusively on Patreon. That's right. You currently listen to our weekly Minimal episode, but each week Ryan and I record an entirely different long-form Maximal episode over on The Minimalist's private podcast, which gives us the private space we need to talk about a bunch of stuff that we don't usually talk about in public. Plus, Patreon is the best way for us to fund this podcast and keep it 100% advertisement free. When you subscribe to The Minimalist Private Podcast on Patreon, you'll also receive a personal link so that our maximal episodes play in your favorite podcast app. You'll also get access to our entire back catalog of more than 100 private podcast episodes. You can find all the details and all the good stuff, including an additional private podcast episode every week over at theminimalists.com slash support. Ryan, what else you got for us this week? Josh, being informed is more important than ever these days. So... I want to encourage you to read more and get informed. And by the way, I got some voicemail tips and comments from our listeners. Check them out. Hi, this is Kira calling from Chicago. I just listened to episode 12 on money and wanted to share some advice that helped me in my minimalist lifestyle during and after college. My dad advised that I didn't attend a university where the tuition would cost more than what I would make in my first year entry salary with that degree. After following that advice, I picked up a second job after graduation to pay off my loans, and I continued to live with roommates to keep costs low. Between both of those approaches, I paid off over $20,000 in debt in less than a year. The financial freedom has opened up more doors than I could ever imagine, so I was able to quit my second job, afford to buy a new car, travel the country, and move to my dream city to pursue my life passion all within five years of time. It was a long and difficult road working 70 plus hours a week for a year, but it was all short-term pain for long-term gain and worth every initial sacrifice to get me to where I am today. Hey there, my name is Sam McGee. I'm from Spokane, Washington, and I wanted to respond to the episode on creativity with Matt Diavela. I love the ideas that are expressed in this episode, which I do feel are consistently hit upon in every short documentary that Matt puts out every week. Um, I have been a longtime follower. Uh, as a documentary filmmaker myself, I've spent the last year replacing the urge to consume with the habit of creating. Uh, this is one of the topics you discussed in this episode. I've found in my commercial work and in my personal life, it's become a lifestyle of creating photographing my family, uh, creating films about my kids for the purpose of sharing that art with my family, for the purpose of um, group therapy with my wife as we learn to be the best parents possible for my kids. That's the, that's the point that I want to make. Um, filmmaking, creating, for me, is a form of therapy. It's a powerful way for me to process the world and invite others to join me in that conversation. Uh, invite others to engage and consider these moments in their own lives. I'm thankful for that invitation that you put out there on the internet every day with the minimalist's quote content, uh, as well as Matt's content. Um, I do personally need the consistency. I choose to listen for the tenth time. Uh, <laughs> because I need to be reminded to kill the habit of constantly consuming. All right, y'all. Thanks again to Amy Ann for joining us today. Make yeah. sure you check out her website, thegoodtrade.com. They also have a newsletter over there, a daily newsletter. And uh, you can find them on social media, at The Good Trade on all the networks. And real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalists. Ryan, we're going on tour. Are we going to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. It's a national tour. We're actually not going on tour. I, I take that back. Uh, it's, it's just you know a many, joke. You know how many hopes you just got up? <laughs> how many people were so excited? Well, I have good news, though. So for the people who are really excited. Yes. Uh, so you and I have been on nine different tours in the last eight years. Okay. And many of those stops we recorded either audio or video for. Mm -hmm. And you can find our previous tour stops now all in one place. If you go to theminimalists.com slash previous, I mean, we've been over, I think, over 200 tour stops. Almost certainly over, oh, way over two. It feels like a million tour stops. If you're uh, rounding to the nearest million, And yes. so you can find all of them there. Some of them have links to video or audio. And if you are a Patreon true fan on Patreon, you will have access to all of our future events as well. We're recording all of our future events. So we are certainly going to be doing some stuff. we got a, a book we're working on. We have our second film that we're working on. I'm sure we'll do some tour stops in the future. 
If you're on our email list, you'll be the first to know about those. But if you want to, if you want the experience of, of us, then it's all there. The minimalists.com slash previous for, to find all of our previous tour stops. And you can find and listen to all of our future events as a true fan on Patreon. If you have a comment, question, or minimalism tip for our podcast, leave us a voicemail 406-219-7839 or send a voice memo to podcast at the minimalists.com. Am I allowed to call in and leave messages? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I've, I've already heard some of them. <laughs> It's always a butt dial. <laughs> yeah, you can comment on this episode, youtube.com slash the minimalist. You're not allowed to comment though, Ryan. Mm. And if you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list at the minimalists.com. You can also receive our simple Sunday emails each week whenever you sign up for our email list. For our added value segment this week, let's listen to the title track from our good friend Paul, uh, Canyon City. Killing Ca- it. Yeah, Canyon City's new album is called Bluebird. And... I think that Paul's music always just sounds to me like a calm walk home. Mm. And uh, I hope you enjoy this title track. It is called Bluebird from Canyon City. And if you leave here today with just one message, folks, we hope it's this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. The Minimalists.